this is Marion Bachmeyer, a mother pushed to the edge. In 1981, she took justice into her own hands after her 7 years old daughter, Anna Bachmeyer, was assaulted and murdered by a man named Klaus Grabowski. During the trial, Marion Bachmeyer brought a gun into the courtroom and shot Grabowski dead on the first day of the trial. She shot him seven times in the back for seven years of her daughter's life. In this video, we will unravel her whole story. If you want to know what the consequences of this bold action were, stay till the end. Marion Bachmeyer was labeled revenge mother after she shot and killed the rapist and murderer of her daughter. What makes it different than other revenge stories is that she did it in the district court. In 1972, her third child, Anna, was born. She was fathered by Bachmeyer's then boyfriend, Christian Berthold, who was the manager of a bar. Christian backed down from commitment and Bachmeyer had to raise Anna alone. On 5th May 1980, when Anna was seven, she was kidnapped by a 35 year old butcher named Klaus Grabowski. Anna had gone to his house to play with his cats. Klaus assaulted her and strangled her to death using a pair of his fiancé's tights. The horrible incident sent shockwaves across the region. He was caught by police with the help of his fiancé and the trial began. Grabowski was a registered offender and had cases against him for abusing young girls. The details of the assault and murder shocked the community and left Marion grappling with grief, anger and an overwhelming desire for justice. As the legal proceedings began against Grabowski, Marion found herself unable to bear the weight of her emotions. In cases involving serious crimes, the legal process often requires thorough investigations, evidence gathering, witness testimonies, and legal preparations. Marion Backmeyer's frustration stemmed from the perceived slowness of the legal system in delivering justice for her daughter, Anna. It is said that there was a long delay in the court proceedings. But whether there really were delays in the court proceedings related to her case would be more accurately documented in historical court records or contemporary news reports. On the first day of the proceedings, Marion Bachmeyer, driven by a mix of sorrow, rage and frustration with the judicial system, took matters into her own hands. In a shocking act of vigilantism, she smuggled a gun into the courtroom and shot Grabowski dead. One of the key elements in understanding Marion Bachmeyer's actions is the profound trauma she experienced because of her daughter's brutal death. The trauma not only came from the loss itself, but also from the nature of the crime. Assault and murder are among the most horrifying acts that can befall a person, and Marion was forced to confront the brutal reality that her daughter had suffered such a fate. Marion Bachmeyer was promptly arrested and charged with murder. The case became a focal point for public debate. The public reaction to Marion Bachmeyer's actions was complex. While some sympathized with her as a grieving mother seeking justice for her daughter, others criticized her for circumventing the legal system. Marion, who had sought justice for her daughter, found herself thrust into a new role, that of a criminal. Was Marion a desperate mother seeking retribution, or had she become a symbol of the system's failure to deliver justice swiftly and effectively? The courtroom became a crucible of conflicting emotions as Marion's fate hung in the balance. Would the legal system condemn her as a criminal, or would it recognize the extraordinary circumstances that had driven her to this desperate act? The air was thick with uncertainty, the outcome uncertain as the scales of justice teetered between the letter of the law and the depths of human emotion. The court acknowledged the profound grief and emotional distress Marion experienced as a result of her daughter's tragic death. While Marion was found guilty of the crime, the sentence she received was relatively light, reflecting the court's understanding of the exceptional nature of the case. She was charged with six years of prison and she only served three years of it. Marion Bachmeyer's story marked by tragedy, vigilantism and a complex legal aftermath eventually faded from the public spotlight. She died aged 46 and was buried next to her daughter Anna in Bergter Cemetery, Lupin. In conclusion, Marion Bachmeyer's life became intertwined with tragedy, grief and an ultimately controversial act of vigilantism. Her story forces us to confront the limitations of the legal system in addressing the emotional needs of victims and their families. 
While their actions were extreme, they sparked a necessary dialogue about the balance between justice and compassion. What would you have done in Marion Backmire's shoes? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to see more content like this, stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to like and share this video.